everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney or Art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can paint this very simple Aurora Borealis. This is very beginner painting friendly. I'm going to explain every technique, every color mix, every material, and every tool, and you're going to be able to see everything so you can create this for yourself at home. Now, to help me do that is my sweet and darling husband, John. Hello. He helps me get this wonderful teaching sharing job accomplished by tracking me literally stalking me with one of our many robotic cameras. He zooms in, he makes sure you see every part of the painting action, and he also, as he can, scans the chat during live streams so that if you have a question about your painting process, about this painting in particular, you can ask it during the live chat and it might get answered on the show. We're a little bit kind of goofy here, so hopefully you're goofy friendly because clearly I'm not the understated one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready to just get right on into this? Absolutely. Okay, so let's jump in and talk about materials. So here I have an 11 by 14 surface. And on our surfaces, this is just an artboard uh, from Michael's. It's just wonderful. Um, we like to put wishes or intentions, and I'm going to put two that came up in chat uh, during our pre-show. So I'm going to say that Betty, sweet Betty, and sweet Barbara, Going through different stuff, but both free from pain. And then my next wish is for all our, our sure paws and our sure claws, right? Mm -hmm. That all of our companions are safe and cozy this holiday season. Safe and cozy. Now over here, let's talk about the acrylic materials that we have. And you get, I'm still getting used to my glasses, guys. Hang in with me. <laughs> So I have phthalo green, phthalo blue, titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, carbon black, and quinacridone magenta. Now here's the thing. I'm actually probably for the midterm do this, and then if I get back, I don't know. I'm getting used to it. They have the three different focal ranges. So fun things I do now. <laughs> so on all of these colors, especially on this one, don't feel like if you don't have my specific brand of paint, or my specific color that your painting isn't going to come out good. This is one of those very flexible designs that's pretty much friendly to everything. Now, we have a step-by-step -step and a traceable on the website. So if you look, here's our finished painting of what we're going to be going towards. So you can see we've got this nice little simple design that you're going to really be able to succeed at. To help you do that, I made a step-by-step -step of this. So if you're really new to painting and you're painting along with me, you can know where we're going in the project journey and not feel so overwhelmed and so lost. Because sometimes being able to alleviate that overwhelmed feeling can do a lot to help you guys succeed in your goals of painting a great painting. And many of you I know are giving these as gifts. What? That? What? Shh. Did, did it explode it? <laughs> no, I just did it. Oh. Remember when I lost that whole giant, giant glob of cadmium yellow? Just missing. That's a weird paint color to just go missing in the middle of a live broadcast, which we did never find. I think so. The trolls took it. The gnomes nope, took it. The spiders <laughs> took it. The spiders took it away. They <laughs> lived it in hiding. Following along, that was the general consensus about the spider invasion: is that they just wanted to paint with me. Now, to do this background here that you see, it's actually going to be pretty easy. But one of the things that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take some of my green and some of my blue, and notice it's about a one-to-one -one mixture, and I'm going to mix them together. And this makes phthalo turquoise, right? You can take any of your blue paints and green paints and get a fairly pretty color. You know, it may not be quite the turquoise that I have. It may be kind of a different turquoise, but it's generally a fairly pretty color. Now, to help erase the wonderful watercolor words that I put out there, I'm going to grab a nice big brush. This is a number 30 ruby satin. And I'm going to just brush those watercolor words into the surface. There's a, not really a big other reason that I wet the surface. It's just that, you know, you don't want crazy words just coming up in your surface. Unless you do want crazy words coming up in your surface. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to start brushing titanium white. This is my titanium white back and forth. Back and forth. See that? Yep. Once I have that kind of going, I'm going to get just a smidge of 
my paint into my brush here and I'm going to start from the bottom. See, and the wiping on the canvas is actually pretty helpful. Because sometimes this bottom part of the blend can be a little bit tricky. Especially if you're new. Mm. And, you know, even though all these skills are really achievable, really doable. Hi, Twix. All these things are really doable. When you're brand new to painting, anything can be a little more challenging. So be really easy on yourself if something seems like it's a little harder to get done. I'm going to rinse out some of my paint here. And I'm going to come in and load just my full phthalo turquoise in and come from the top and paint down. So see, this is a much darker color, isn't it? Mm. Much darker color. Painting down. And what's wonderful is when I get to the place where this is still wet, I can blend the upper part of the sky very nicely into my lake. So it makes my job a little bit easier. And then even if I let this dry, because this particular color set is so transparent, I can kind of go over the dry paint. So very friendly. Ah. Coming down and I'm making it a little bit darker. Notice there's a big thing I'm paying attention to, though. Can you guys guess what it is? Not that uh. I'm going to make you guess because this is a class and I do believe in a class where she can explain her <laughs> techniques. I'm just wondering how you're Pop doing. Pop quiz! <laughs> Pop quiz! That's fun, right? So if you'll notice that I'm keeping my brush strokes very level, and even if I come down into the water, what am I going to do? Mm. Keep everything level so that the lines and streaks and color mixes on my canvas are horizontal. Right? That's pretty good. And anywhere you want to smooth it out, like you can just smooth it out. Know that this color mix can be a little bit transparent. And if you're painting a student paint, that means like a paint that was maybe a little bit less money. So how they save you the money is they don't put as much pigment in your paint. And what that means for you, and are you guys ready for this? Hmm. You just got to do two coats. So don't like freak out and be like, I can't use it anymore. What am I going to do with it? You just use it up. And if you want to upgrade because you love painting, do it then. But just know if you're uh, using that uh, kind of paint, you might possibly like have to do a couple coats. And that's not the worst thing in the world, right? Yeah. Now, uh, tape. <laughs> it's got stuck to my step-by-step -step reference. Not even sure how. So weird. Now here on this lower part of the surface, and I am going to use my T-square. And... I never do this wet, but in this one particular case I am because I need to know where I'm at. I'm going to come just below the halfway point, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take my brush with just some paint on it because I want a almost invisible mark for myself, right? And the reason I'm doing it like this today is because I want my paint underneath to still be a little bit wet, right? Gotcha. Got me? Yeah. Okay, so this is still a little bit wet. This will still work if it dries on you, but that's why I'm working a little bit fast. Now I'm going to take a bright brush, this little one right here, and I'm going to load a bit of paint into it. And we're going to make a little bit of a kind of travel up. So the first stroke I'm going to do is I'm going to come here towards the right, and then I'm going to turn and bank left. Bank left. Bank left. That's my first Aurora. And then I'm going to come a little bit here and out and bank left. And guess what I'm going to do here? Mm. And I might take my surface like this so it's easier for me to do. Everything is wet top. Everything is wet bottom. Mirror this. Now, I may kind of foreshorten it where the bank is kind of like that in the water. Yeah, I kind of changed the bank a bit. Kind of shortened it. There we go. We have these two banks in the water. Then, with just a little bit of paint still on my brush, I'm going to do the coolest thing. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to do it as vertical as I can. See, I'm doing it? Yep. Vertical as I can. Some strokes short, some strokes tall, and I'm on my edge of my brush. See, I'm on the edge of it. Mm hmm. And I'm going to come here. 
can mirror what I've got up top down below. And again, I'm moving quickly enough that my paint stays a bit wet. Now I'm gonna do a fun thing. I'm gonna use my fan just because it's already in a great shape. And I'm gonna blend this out. See how I'm doing? Yeah. There we go. Nice soft aurora beginning to come into my painting. <gasps> Look at that. Still cooking along. The turn is always very interesting. When you come into the turn, you want to come up here and right at the middle point of the turn, you begin to do the upward marks on the other side of the line. It's kind of the same thing as our ribbon perspective. So if you guys have liked ribbon perspective in the past, that's how that works. And to make it easy on myself, I'll do this so I can do the same in the water. Right, not too bad, not too bad. I'm going to take this brush and just blend a little bit of it up. See, I'm just blending a little bit of it up? Yep. You could use uh, your bright too. I just find the fan is, is really useful for this, but you could use any nice flat brush that you have. Now, hopefully, we're still pretty wet here. Yeah, we're still pretty good. So I'm going to come through. And do the same thing here that I did there. I'm going to go kind of blend those in, right? On those little edges. Some short, some longer. And then repeat down below. Repeating down below. Repeating down below. Turning my brush on its side as I come down into the curve. What do I do? Come back with my fan brush. Take a minute to just soften and blend this. Now we're going to come back with some colors and some things, right? But this first blend really helps us set our aurora. And it also helps if the paint is wet. When we do it, it's just helpful. It's not the only way to get through, it's just helpful. As you see, I'm coming back with more paint, so. You can do this same technique with dry brushing and have the surface underneath be dry and it will still come out for you. I'm gonna turn it on my side again, just because I have this lip that catches on my easel. Right? And I wanna make sure Making sure my little roar has got its perspective on the twist. Okay, there it goes. It does its perspective. Come back. Let's make sure this has its little perspective on the twist. Brushing up. Brush, 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 brush. Brush, brush. Look at that. We put in the beginning of our aurora. And now if you look at our... Um, step-by-step uh, -step reference, you can see that we've just completed step three. That's how fast we're going. What? Now we're going to put out cadmium, not cadmium, quinacridone magenta. Yay, queen! Open the queen! <laughs> How's everybody doing today? I mean, like, so crazy. Really good. I am so glad to be here today. I am too. So grateful, so glad, so thrilled. I'm going to put out my cad yellow medium. So that's my quinacridone magenta and my cad yellow medium. Okay. And we're going to start, uh, you know, thinking about making this a more fanciful. Are we? Fanciful aurora. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to just use my fan. Now this is an art Sherpa fan, right? So I've got what I have here is a ruby satin bright number six. This is an art Sherpa fan number four. It's more important to pay attention to the approximate size of my brushes. Don't worry about you get the same number as me and some other brand because there's no standard sizing. Right. So that's what you want to pay attention to. And I'm going to take a little bit of my pink. I might get a little yellow into my pink because that's just real fun. Don't have to. I'm going to add a little white. 
kind of make a little messy mix. See that? Yeah. And let's come here and we're going to tap, 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 tap. And then I'm going to tap, 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 tap. And then let's just go up a bit. And if I need to go on the edge of the brush, I can do that. Are you okay? Yep. Okay. That was a little worrisome. This is a crazy noise, my darling. <laughs> Sorry, I just dropped something. Okay. Just doing that here, too. Same here. Same, same. All right. Rinse out. A little water in my brush, and I'm going to blend this out. Okay, get a little water in my brush, and I blended that out. I'm going to come back, right, with a little bit of white. And then you just blend it out. Look at that. The beginning of that color is stunning. All right, we're going to come here and just pink and white through, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit as we come through. This one is mostly uh, the pink, so I'm going to come here and I'll just come along. And I'll just do this in increments. There we go. Getting that upwards a little bit. Sometimes I have to lift my handle up to get a better plane on the brush to the surface. I am going to have to put this on the side because of my little problems with the downward run. See how we're doing that? Yeah. Now, again, that's about the plane of my surface on my brush. So I can come right here and touch it in the plane of my surface. I'm talking about the brush being a little more perpendicular to the canvas as I drag along. But what I have is a really stunning aurora coming in. Hopefully those who live near this gorgeous atmospheric effect, I just grabbed a little bit of yellow to make, to make drama. Now you're going to see me going to the perpendicular plane of the surface. And I will come on the corner of my brush and make sure that I bring that up. There we go. And then I'm going to come here, tapping that color in. And then right here on the edge, what I've got to do is I've got to come on the edge of my fan. See, I'm done? Mm -hmm. And then I get back to the perpendicular of it. Wonderful. What do I have to do? I have to carry that aurora right there. You can do this. I'm going to do this one with a different type of brush so that you can see that it, this isn't one of those techniques where if you don't have my brush, you can't do the thing. Okay? Because sometimes it feels like that when you're new to painting, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, man, if I don't have that tool, I can't even do the thing. And I just got this one kit right here, and it doesn't have that tool. So what am I supposed to do, right? That's the feeling that one can get. I'm going to kind of fix the curve of that aurora before I go here. I'm doing? Yeah. And it's real nice because you can, with this particular brush, come through easily and fix your curve. Okay. And make that line just look really stellar and stand out. Now let's switch. Let's just say you had a regular old square brush like this, right? Because mm -hmm. that happens. I'm going to take a little bit of my green and a little bit of my yellow together because those are fine colors. Maybe some of my white in here. And I'm going to come along here. And I'm going to tap along the bow that I put in. And isn't it nice how the white kind of helps you guide that in? I'm going to come on the edge of this brush. It's maybe just a little more involved. Sometimes on the flat to get short flares up. And sometimes on the edge to get longer ones. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Doable. 
You can stroke even back and forth with the bright if you need to. Want more white into it? You can get more white into it. The other white just does a nice job. Mm-hmm. Come into this. What do we got to do here? Similar thing, don't we? Because what's going to make this look amazing is the reflection will mirror. I have a nice mirror. <laughs> Sorry. So tap, 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 right? There's the bead of paint. I'm tap, 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 tapping. And I'm going to just pull down a little bit what I have up top down here. It gets a little longer there. Maybe in the reflection, I'll pull it a little longer. And I can be a little softer in the reflection because it's a reflection. A little yellow, maybe a little green, and a little more yellow, and some white coming up. Coming up, tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Let's go right away. The reason I use that ruler that you saw is it helps me do a straight line because your water line needs to be as level as you can make it. The more level you can make it, the better off that painting will come out. Mm -hmm. See, I'm just doing the upper one and I'm just brushing up. Finishing up our color. Maybe that goes long. Right? Maybe. And what does that mean down here? I just got to do the same thing down here. So if that went long there, this will go long here. We can just finish that reflection. So awesome. Now, I'm going to come along this side of the Aurora and that side of the Aurora. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. But to do it, I've got to put out my CAD red. You guys ready? And we're going to put out some little CAD red. We're going to put in some water reflection. So I'm going to take a little bit of my red, just a smidge, kind of on the corner, and a bit more of my yellow. But notice what I'm not doing. Hmm. I'm not mixing them together, am I? No. No. I'm going to come out here between this part and this part, about the, mm, almost the halfway point, and I'm going to make some little taps. I know I've been a little quiet here, but everyone's been po poking me to say how on point you look today. Oh, thank they, you. It's a really lemony like, day. <laughs> they really like the style and think it's looking really good. So, and I have to say I agree. So I was obliged to say. Thank you. Looking good, wife. So I, I'm going to take that compliment and help you glow your water. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing here, you can see, is I'm just tapping up and down, right? A little mm -hmm. more yellow maybe on this one, and there's some red in it, and I'm just pulling this down. That's going to help us build a little cove of reflecty stuff. A little more yellow on here. Okay, tap, tap, tap. Maybe shorten it up. Just a little bit of that. Now, same thing here, and I might straighten out my surface just because it's easier for me. You do what's easiest for you, for your positioning, for your posture. I'm going to get a little more yellow. And I'm going to come right here. It's a little far, far out again, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. Pulling that down. I like to shorten it as I come to each side of it. There we go. You can get a little red in there. I think that's just stunning when that happens. All right, so we're doing really fantastic. I think we are really, really, really doing very good. Yeah. Now, while I'm here, and I might even want to do it with a bigger brush. I'm going to get just a little bit of my white. Work a little bit of my white through here. 
and maybe get some yellow. All right, see how that is? Mm -hmm. Just a big brush to let you do it. And we're going to make just a few long. Look at that. These are soft. Notice how I'm not even bending the bristles. This is going to help our water feel reflecty. Doesn't that help our water feel so reflecty? Oh, yeah. Let's look at how my brush was. That wasn't fancy at all, was it? Hmm. Just nice, just relaxed, just easy. Then I'm going to take this brush here. It's still a number six bright. You could be using a number eight, you know, and just whatever is in your hand, guys. Just whatever's in your hand. I'm just so glad to be with everyone today. Me too. Now I'm going to put out, this is carbon black. You could use Mars black. Don't be worried about the blacks that you would use, okay? Don't be worried about the blacks that you would use. So I'm going to take this nice black. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to make some land masses. Come along your horizon line, your water line, and make as level of a line as you can. Doesn't go all the way to the center. We're going to leave about two inches three inches at the center a dip in water come back and get some more black and then i'm going to come here and i'm going to just start a little land mass going up just a silhouette of a land mass i'm going to paint that back you've got this you're doing good all right now i'll show you a little trick I'm going to come on the edge of my brush. You can also do it on the flat, but you're just making little distant, look, little tree lines. You want it to be rough and uneven, don't you? Mm -hmm. And that little bit of roughness can kind of help your distant hill feel like it's got some little trees in it. And you can tap up and down, and that's another good one. See, I'm just tapping down the edge of the brush. Yeah. I'm going back up, back down, right? If my stroke up and down isn't working for me, the tapping will. All right, think back to Bob. Sometimes the best stuff just works. And I'm just tapping up and down on the edge of my brush. What am I doing? It makes the hill line just a little bit soft, and that's what helps your viewer's brain know that you're talking about a landmass. Gotcha. So now I'm going to come here, leaving that open, and just go across as I did before. Woohoo! Making some more landmass. Maybe it's a little bit lower here and it comes up. We've got a traceable, guys. There's a step by step, there's a traceable, there's all these tools on the website for you that will really, 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 really help. And they're there. There's links to how to resize. There's links on how to do stars different ways. There's links on how to just basically paint with acrylic for the first time. So whatever, wherever you're at, the chances are that there's something on that web page that will help today's painting session be a little bit easier for you. You guys still with me? I am. I still a question for you. Okay. I'm so, going to just be tapping up and down over here like before, so it's a great time to take questions. If you, you say that the... Carbon black and Mars black are, inter are interchangeable. For the purposes of this, yes. There's some differences in them, and I have a whole video about, like, why do we have lamp black? Why do we have carbon black? Why do we have ivory black? Mm. You know? What are the different blacks? And generally, it's about uh, the bias of the black, the depth of the pigment, where the pigment comes from, how transparent it is, how tinting it is, and how reflective it is. But for this, just use whatever black tube came in your stuff. Now, when you get into mixing and landscape painting, that can get much more serious, but it can become part of something that you want to think about. Gotcha. But you should never, ever be too stressed about it, if that makes sense. Like, mm. be aware of it, but imagine, you know, when you think back to the great painters that you probably actually like at the museum, right? The, the, the artists that you, you know, go, wow, that's just beautiful, or that takes me away. Chances are they had a very hard time getting to their art materials. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, they didn't have all the wonderful, amazing choices that you have right now. And they did beautiful artwork. And that's a lesson for you. Is that, you know, if Turner could do it, you can do it. See how this beautiful background there? Now, while we're letting the black dry just a bit, we're going to do a couple of things. Now, 
To make my time doing this easier, I'm going to use my dotting tool and some fluid paint. Here's what you could do. Don't have a dotting tool, right? Or fluid paint. I'll give you a couple things. You could use a toothpick. If you didn't have a dotting tool or flu fluid paint, you could take a detail brush that you had, maybe over here to this, that heavy body paint, right? Oh. And very carefully make a dot. Let me go over there and take a look. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna dip into my heavy body paint here with my brush and I'm gonna turn this over. Do I have a special tool for dotting? Yes, I do, because this is a little less consistent. You will have to kind of work a little bit for the dots. But if you don't have the tool right now, don't not do the painting. Now, if you don't want to buy this particular fabulous brand of paint, I do really love it. And it does come in a little bottle and you can get it half off at Michael's in the United States. So let's just say that's not an option to you. You can get any of the craft bottle paint white and it will get you through this and look just fine and be okay. And I mean, some of it's like a dollar. So, you know, don't feel like, oh, it's got to be this thing. It doesn't got to be this thing. I do like this thing, and I'm about to show you why. You guys ready to go? Yes. John, I'm going to go from right to left. Let's okay. go. Okay. This is why. <laughs> you dawdle away. I'm not going to go back every time you get the white. No, don't, don't worry about me getting the white. You guys know what white I'm getting, right? We talked about it. Up in the top, we're going to make some stars. We didn't do star splatters because I know as beginners, sometimes those splatters are super stressful. <laughs> right? Yep. And I felt like for if you got like, say, maybe your very first super successful Aurora Borealis, you would not want it to get messed up with a splatter that you weren't happy with. So I was like, ah, oh, would never do that to them. So these nice groups of stars that are up here, you can take if you want to, you can come with, I'm going to use my smaller tool. You can take some smaller dots down just to kind of, you know, make it more of a sky. So pull those wherever you feel like it will add to the composition. <laughs> now, once I have added to the composition that way, I'm going to come and I think I'll just use my fan brush again, but you could use your bright or any brush that you have. I'm going to come boom, boom, boom on the edge of my white. Just kind of getting it in there. And I'm going to come from here forward. See how I did it on my original. Sometimes I look at the step by step and I'm like, when I look back at my original and go, am I doing it the same way? And I'm going to just tap up and down. I'll do a couple with my fan. And then I will do some with my bright. But what's big about this is I'm going to be horizontal. So my reflections sparkling in the water, whatever they are, are going to be horizontal. I'm going to load up my white and I'm going to go back and forth, right? Yep. Now, uh, if you don't have that fan brush, you're like, man, I really want to do that, but I'm not really sure. Back to that bright. If I can get you to believe anything as a new artist, like I'm just tapping up and down, same technique. It's just maybe a little more structured than the fan brush. That's the difference. Why do artists have different brushes? Because it's fun, guys. Um, a lot of artists, you'll see them in their studio when they're working and they'll get into a painting and they may stay one brush the whole painting. Right? They one might. One brush to stroke them all. One brush to stroke them all. One brush to buy them. <laughs> right? But you... You know, you might want to do a different thing with that. It's okay. Right? You're going to want to bring this. I like to widen my reflections and make them kind of more pronounced and noticeable as they come up front. Just tapping up and down. Look at that. It's like the water's having a little sparkle. There are other more involved, fussy ways of getting the sparkle in, but look, it just looks like a sparkle. It's not like particularly stressful or hard. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and a little bit of my cad red, kind of together, tapping this up and down, but loosely mixed, guys. Come here to your cities above the waterline, into the hill, tap a little bit of these lights. Boom. If you need a little more red, I'm going to come on this corner. You can see how I loaded it.
These are just little lights that are up in the hill. Then when all is said and done, get your favorite little detail brush. You're going to come here into the corner. I know you guys are freaking out right now. It just came together so fast. It does come together so fast. One hoot, Aurora Borealis. I cannot wait to see your version in groups. I cannot wait to see how you paint yours. I can't wait to see what it is. You know, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. You've got our website. You can share with us there. If you go to the link that's provided, you can come to this video page. You open it up. You can leave your painting there too. You can help me rate it because we let our viewers come in and second guess our ratings because your experience might be different than my experience and we want you to have a voice in all things. We hope from the bottom of our hearts that everything is wonderful and good for you and yours right now. I would say I, I would love to turn on the bubbles and do a double Sherpa dance because we got over 600 people who are joining us for this awesome paint today and Simon doesn't get to see the painting, the chat. I've been a little quiet today. He has been a little quiet, but sometimes you got to have a chill day. It is. But we yeah. love you guys. Thank you for coming and joining us. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.